Greetings and salutations fellow humanoids and welcome to the first episode in our brand new Let's Play series of Hearts of Iron 4 using the Road to 56 mod as the Kingdom of Italy. That's right, brand new series and I'm really excited and I hope that you're excited too. So let's get right to it. Now, as the Kingdom of Italy, we find ourselves in a rather interesting position. We are arguably the weakest amongst the major powers in the game, the big boys, and uh, that makes it all the more interesting for us. We have to play our cards right and uh, try to avoid wasting equipment and manpower unnecessarily because we do not have an infinite amount of manpower or industrial power like the Soviet Union, for example. So that makes it all the more interesting for us. So let's see what we're working with in terms of the Kingdom of Italy. So first of all, we are led by Benito Mussolini, Il Duce himself, who gains a small political power bonus of 5%. It ain't much compared to Evil Mustache Man over here that gets plus 25%, but we'll make do with what we have. Now the rest only affects the AI, so it really doesn't, you know, help us in any way, shape or form. So let's move on to our national spirits. Excessive Regia Marina budget. So we have a penalty to our factory output, but we do get a dockyard output bonus as a trade-off. Of the three armed forces, the Regia Marina receives the largest share of the budget allowing for a simpler modernization of the latter at the expense of the others. Bloated military bureaucracy. So we get a bonus to our political power gain, which is good, and it costs less to hire army chiefs and high command officers. We'll keep that in mind, as it will be helping us in the long term quite a bit. However, we do get a hefty penalty to the overall performance of our army on the field, which is not good, and it takes more time to research new military doctrines, which is quite bad indeed, since we're going to be changing and researching that from the get-go. So yeah, we have to see to this uh, national spirit pretty much from the start after we get rid of Ethiopia. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the army's overly strong tendency to favor style over performance has made it much more complex to modernize. Any innovation, whether technical or organizational, that would challenge the prestige of the high command is rejected, forcing it to use tactics dating back to the Great War. So we have a lack of power in motors. Basically what this comes down to is a rather hefty penalty to all the types of planes we can use in the game as far as I can tell. One of the main weaknesses of the Italian Air Force is a lack of horsepower in the aircraft produced, leaving a stain on the rest of the plane's equipment. A major modernization of our engine production capacities is necessary to solve this problem, which makes our aircraft less efficient in terms of speed, something very damaging in an era where aircraft only going faster every year. Yeah, that is going to have to be fixed eventually. Not our biggest priority, but it's still damaging our performance on the field, which I do not like. So we'll have to see to that when we can. So down here, we have three of the potential national focuses we could take down the line, uh, which will affect what we're going to be doing on the world stage. So we could revive the stress of front. The stress of front was an agreement between Italy, France, and the United Kingdom to maintain Austria's independence, as well as the reaffirmation of the Treaty of Versailles. It is clear that Germany's ambitions will eventually come up against ours, so we should stand united against them. Now, considering how Italy was kind of left out to dry after the conclusion of the First War, I don't think I'll be playing chummy too much with France and the United Kingdom. We're going to be doing our own thing, but if the uh, opportunity presents itself, maybe we'll, we'll play the good guy with the uh, UK and France. But I doubt it right now. Let's call this one improbable. Militarize the Rome Protocols The Rome Protocols were agreements that we signed with Austria and Hungary concerning economic cooperation between our three nations in a position against the territorial integrity of Yugoslavia. Transforming these agreements into an alliance treaty would make it possible to defend Austria, which is subject to the lust of the Reich, as well as to extend Italian influence in Europe. Now this one seems pretty fun because we could uh, basically defend Yugoslavia when uh, Germany goes a little bit too far south. Uh, I wouldn't say this one is impossible. Finally, we have cooperation with Germany. Like us, the Germans are seeking revenge against the powers of the Entente. It would be in our interest to align ourselves with them in order to create a common front. Well, I'm going to say that we're not going to be cooperating with Germany because I want to go down the a historical route. And also, I don't want to be the lapdog of the Germans. So we'll be doing our own thing. Sorry, evil mustache man. So let's see our brief history. With the rise of fascism, Italy has entered a new glorious era. Its forces are currently in the process of adding Ethiopia to the growing Italian colonial empire. But Mussolini's ambitions do not stop there. Dominion over the Mediterranean has always been Italy's destiny, and a new order of things is taking shape in Europe. 
When the tidal wave of change arrives, Italy must find a place at its crest or risk being swept away. Well said. So let's get started. Now, we won't be playing on Iron Man mode because uh, this is a modded playthrough and you can't get achievements anyway, so I don't see the point. And we will not be playing on historical AI priorities so that the AI can sometimes behave in ways we would not expect. This forces us to think on our feet and uh, not have the hindsight of uh, history to our advantage. So let's get started. Here we go! And here we go, everybody. Now, I'm going to be going through the uh, basic setup that I usually do for any Hearts of Iron 4 playthrough, and I'll probably cut them out in future playthroughs, but for now, uh, let's uh, not jump through things. So, basic texts you usually start with are nothing special here, just some research and uh, industrial capacity and construction speed. And we'll also be switching over our military doctrine. Italy starts with grand battle plan, but I want to go down superior firepower. It's uh, kind of the bread and butter uh, for many players. Now, it looks like we have the disable uh, the tutorial videos showing up, so you could disable that in the menu right here. So you don't have the tutorial uh, videos popping up. Let's see to our military production here. We won't be needing much of that. Let's keep up on the dive bombers. And we're also going to need a whole bunch of artillery. We will be putting a lot more line infantry into our template soon. So we're going to need a lot of cannons. Mucho guns. Now, when it comes to construction queues, I usually like to look in my focus tree to see what kind of infrastructure bonuses I get. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the only one we get from mainland Europe is increase the north-south links, which gives plus two infrastructure in a whole bunch of uh, regions, seven total, including Lazio, Sicily, and Campania. So we know that we do not want to increase infrastructure beyond eight in these areas. So Lazio, Campania, and Sicily here. Now, the north of Italy, I say, would be uh, the hub of its industrial capacity. So we're going to be constructing a whole bunch of ins infrastructure there, and we're going to be lacing some construction for various civilian factories in the middle of these. So, for example, Lazio is already good to go. Next, Campania. Sicily, I think we're going to be keeping for the end because I want to make a whole bunch of dockyards in Sicily. I want it to be the hub of my uh, industrial production capacity. Uh, my naval production capacity, sorry. So I'm going in PMO. Military factory in Lombardy, sure. Veneto. Southern Tyrol. Okay, that's not a bad initial construction queue. It's going to take a while to get through that, so we could leave that run for a while. In terms of naval production, always make sure to have a few convoys at the very least, and we're going to run through our original ships that already have some progress on them being built. Make sure to go through those, and once they're done, we're going to have some uh, excess <clears throat> dockyards, which we'll be repossessing to start building a more streamlined navy. Probably start with some marines and some gunboats in terms of destroyers. Next, national focus. Let's see now. I do believe we want to go with restructure the divisions because we want to start working on our rather bad national spirit, which is a bloated military bureaucracy. After we're done with Ethiopia, we're probably going to switch over to industrial uh, capacity right here. We want to have a little minor industrial revolution here in Italy. And let's move on to the army. Now, we already have some troops stationed in Italy. We want to make sure to assign them to the lines they're already Attento. facing. Like so. Attento. I'm going to also be giving them the order to attack. Like so. These guys, let's make them attack. Something like this. Comandi. Pronto. Let's get ourselves a field commander, field marshal. Our boy Pietro Badoglio, he's going to do the job. The main force is going to be headed by Giovanni Messi, who's kind of our go-to guy, highest level general. And from the south, we're going to send in Sebastiano, 
because he has the capacity of becoming a very good field marshal. That being done, order set. Let's set our boys to attack. And while they do that, let's move some planes overhead in Ethiopia. Let's have them do some air superiority missions, close air support, interception, strategic bombing, same old song and dance. And let's grab some more bombers that we have in Italy and send them to help out. Let's see what else do we have. I have a whole bunch over here. Let's send them in the southern part. That should be more than enough air support to help out our boys. Now, Ethiopia is kind of a backwater. It doesn't have much in terms of industrial capacity, and it doesn't have an air force whatsoever. So basically, we're going to be dominating the skies, giving us a large advantage in the attack. Ordini. Ethiopia doesn't have much of a chance. Unless it's played by a player, it usually cannot win. Moving on, we have a certain amount of time to vanquish Ethiopia before we get a nasty debuff, but that should not be an issue. That's something from the mod, we don't need that. Combat reports. This is a good way to spend XP in the Road to 56 mod if you have too much. So let's get rid of that for now. Let's see. Realize Roman ambitions. This could be a good end game goal for this series in which we reform the Roman Empire. Depending on the route we choose, it may be viable or not, but uh, let's keep this in mind. We definitely want to get more oil as Italy since we have very little fuel capacity and we have a large navy so we have many boats but no fuel to put into them which makes them basically useless. Now if we get the excavation 1 technology we could start drilling for oil in Campania. Definitely something we should uh, keep in mind. That being said, I think we're done here. We are also part of the naval treaties which limits the uh, total weight or value that we could give to ships so we can't make the best battleships and cruisers because of that but that's not an issue because in the early game i usually aim for submarines and destroyers and eventually this will dissolve itself as uh, tensions in the world mount so we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna pay too much mind to this until then that being said let's move all the planes we have left over here in sardinia I do believe we have a little bit down here. All right, let's consolidate our navy. This is gonna drain our <clears throat> this is gonna drain our fuel supply big time. What I'm gonna do? Gonna tell them all to merge and to move here to Calabria. Being said, let's get a little bit of oil from Venezuela. The main, uh, one of the main exporters for fascist oil. And uh, we're going to go through the war in Ethiopia, and then we're going to reshuffle and reorganize our entire navy. And I'm going to give them cute names and whatnot to the armies and divisions. But for now, we'll just push through and uh, we'll see to reorganizing afterwards. For now, let's unpause the game, increase the speed. That's what we want to see, green bubbles, as our offensive is successful for the time being. I keep an eye on the notifications that appear. We're gonna go for the war propaganda when we have enough political power, since it's a pretty cheap war support for only 50 PP. All right, let's take up some war support out of the good old use of propaganda. We're done restructuring the divisions, and let's go down the path that will help us uh, attend to the bloated military bureaucracy. Now, what we can do is end this bad habit of our pol policy of favoritism towards party members, which has given us a loyal army, but at the same time, it has found itself corrupted and led by people who favor increasing their influence within the latter rather than its modernization. It is time to stop this and return to a system that is really only based on merit. Or could go down the original idea of uh, the uh, fascist military, but just polish it uh, to get rid of its kinks. The army and its glorification is what made the Partito Nacional Fascista so powerful. We shall continue our policy of glorifying the army and its officers, thus ensuring greater political control. You know what? I think I'm going to go down this tree. The simple reason is we're plain fascists and we should have the fanciest hats. That's how it works. 
Next, I'm going to formalize militia formation. The reason why is that for, uh, militia make decent defensive templates, at least they're uh, cost efficient. So we're going to be using those guys to defend uh, our key borders, ports, airports. They're not going to be line infantry, but they're going to be cheap defensive units, basically. We have to make sure to keep our operations and garrisons as a focus. And before I forget, let's create an intelligence agency. Let's go with the eagle with the swords in its eyes. That looks pretty cool. Looks like we're about to take the capital here. It, Ethiopia may or may not capitulate as soon as we take Adia, Baba. Commandi. Avanzate! And so falls the Empire of Ethiopia. It's unfortunate. Now, we will not be annexing this territory. We're going to be puppeting it. The reason why? It's kind of a backwater. There isn't much going on here, but there is a huge native population. Making it a puppet will give us access to a large pool of manpower. Now that's said and done, our boys are done here in our new puppet, the Italian East Africa. And we're going to be sending them back home for a little bit of R&R. &R. Like so. So, now let's restructure our templates a little bit. We have a little bit of army experience, which is good. So let's see what we have here. <clears throat> we have what is possibly the most terrible tank template I've ever seen. This very basic cavalry template will be used as our mounted police template. So the mounted police will be used uh, to simply tend to resistance and compliance in our occupied territories. So that one being made, let's go into our occupied territories and make sure that yes, the mounted police is our base template for that. We'll be improving them significantly to increase their uh, suppression and efficiency, therefore. <clears throat> Camel cores I kind of like, to be honest, because they're really good in the desert, and we may use them uh, in the Northern African campaign if ever we invade, let's say, Alexandria and the Suez Canal, because we would like to have control of the Mediterranean, which involves uh, controlling the Suez Canal and the Gibraltar Strait over here. So we're going to keep that template for now. <clears throat> this is our base infantry template. It's pretty bad, but maybe we could use it as it is for now. We're going to keep it, but we're also going to duplicate it and improve it somewhat. Going to make our standard bread and butter template over here. Going to call it Infantry 20. The 20 is for its uh, total combat width that we will have at the end. So this is a classic 7-2, seven two, seven two it's called. Seven lines of our infantry and two of artillery. It's kind of the bread and butter of any playthrough in Hearts of Iron 4, especially when playing against AI. We're going to be putting some armored recon on them, and we'll be keeping the engineers. I like them for especially attacking over rivers. And then we're going to be putting some support artillery, some support anti-air, and some support anti-tank. That's going to be our bread and butter template, everybody. This is going to be the bulk of our army, the bread and butter. Our Divisione Alpina will be our special forces, our commandos. We're just going to be adding some Armored Recon on them, Support Artillery, that's going to be it for now. We don't have much XP beyond that, so let's keep the rest for when we're going to get a Militia Template, which will be our basic defensive template. Now let's see here. So we have no special templates in here. Uh, we do have a tank template, but it's really bad. So we're going to be switching all of these guys over to a basic infantry 20 template. Attento. We're also going to be grabbing all of the mountain rangers that we have, five total, which isn't bad. I'm going to give them the commander of Giulio Martinat, who has uh, pretty good t uh, traits here, one being the mountaineer. So he's especially good in the mountains. He's going to be our mountain boy. Now let's see about giving our boy Giovanni Messi here a full army. So we need 24 total. So let's grab 10 of these boys. 
switch them over to here, and switch their template to Infantry 20. This gives us a basic solid army that is severely under-equipped for now and under-trained. So these guys are going to have to take a while to be consolidated. Let's see everybody else here. They're pretty bad. Let's put them down to base infantry. Let's just change these icons. Changing the icons helps for organization here. Let's change them all down to base infantry, so that way we know that they're all the same. And we could get rid of the Divisione Colonial division because it's basically our base infantry uh, template without the engineers. Actually, now that I think about it, let's do the opposite. Let's get rid of the um, base infantry template and go with the Divisione Colonial. The reason why is that in, uh, engineer companies take a butt ton of support equipment and support equipment takes a lot of production power to make in my opinion. So we're going to save a lot in, on these by switching over to the basic uh, Divisione Colonial. So we're going to get a whole bunch of uh, support equipment back and then we could get rid of the base infantry template. And this is going to be our base infantry template from now on. It's going to be a good uh, basic template to train. But for now, we have a huge backlog of equipment as the templates of our units change over. You're going to see their strength go down, and they're going to need a huge amount of uh, equipment to compensate for that. Let's put these boys over here. Alright, so let's see what we got going on for us. So let's make sure to have at least five factories on infantry guns and cannons, which is a pretty decent start. We got three on tanks. We're going to increase over time. That's not a bad uh, layout to start with, in my opinion. Let's see what decisions we have available. Let's close all of these. We want anti-democratic raids and we want anti-communist raids. Reason being is that it will reduce the influence of the Democrats and socialists within our country and it will also increase our stability overall. It starts by reducing it, but you regain stability over time, and in the end you get more, usually, at least. Oh, we have one more factory, eh? Alright. Let's go for... Oh, actually, before I forget, we need a whole bunch of... Wrong one. Anti-air. And anti-tank, because it's part of our template. If we never make any, our units will always be under strength, which is not good. Put our artillery to the top. Actually, let's put tanks all the way on top over here. All right, so Germany proposes an anti comintern pact. Now we sign a pact to address the Comintern's goal of spreading communism worldwide through the use of subversion and violence. By signing this pact, we agree to share intelligence on a communist threat and act in close cooperation against this menace. Sure. Rather work with Germany than the socialists. Let's make sure these boys are redeploying Pronto. and not walking in the desert. What do we got timing out over here? More propaganda. And I do believe we have the naval treaties coming up. Yep, that's no problem. Pronto, we will not be worried about that. Now then, uh, with this army kind of organized, let's give it a nice name. We're going to start uh, simply with the first legion. And we're going to give them a fancier name down the line. Let's give uh, Messe a infantry expert perk. This is very good since it increases our division attack with infantry. And that being the bulk of our army makes them a lot more effective overall. Being done in Africa, let's reconsolidate all our planes. I think that's all of them. To make sure you could look at your roster here and make sure that they're all in the same area. Just to make sure that you don't leave some planes behind. And let's merge them all together. Alright. I'm going to exercise these boys to grind some XP and to, uh, well, make them better overall. We're not going to be using all of these, especially not... Um, I don't use uh, carriers all that much and I especially won't use it in the Mediterranean Sea since you have access to land almost all over. 
it's more useful in the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, I find. All right, we're done with the backbone of the party, which is excellent. Now, if we get Adapt Great War Tactics, it will increase our land doctrine speed research by 20%. This will be very important for us. High Command remains convinced that we can reuse the same tactics that led us to victory in the Great War. We cannot change their minds completely, but we can try to adapt them sufficiently. All right, let's see who we got here. We got an inf infiltrator. Let's go with the Master Interrogator over here. And let's put him on reducing the resistance in the... Uh, Eritrea. Countered intelligence being created. Let's boost anti-partisan twice. Once again, uh, you want to stay on top of your resistance and garrisons. The reason why is that it costs a lot of equipment when it starts getting out of hand. And as we start invading other countries, we're going to want to have uh, that under control. Now, one thing we're going to do is that we're going to let a little bit of time fly and wait until the Spanish Civil War starts, and then we'll get involved into that, I believe. Let's go for dispersed industry. Second naval treaty signed. Very good. Popular front victory in France. The Front Populaire, a political alliance made up of a large part of French left-wing movements, including the SFAO, the Radical Party, and the Communist Party, won the French legislative elections with 57% of votes. Many strikes have been organized in support of the Front, Léon Blum, the leader of the SFIO, has appointed prime minister. Their program is built around the defense of democracy, in particular through their opposition to the far-right leagues. Hey, their pacifism and the implementation of many social reforms, such as paid holidays, as well as a desire to revive the economy by developing consumption. They are nothing more than disgusting Bolsheviks. <laughs> Alright, the militia is ready. Now let's see about our puppet over here, Italian East Africa. Now they don't have the most interesting templates for now, but we're going to be picking some up eventually. For now, let's look to our mi militia and give them, let's say, six units of militia and some support artillery. That should be enough for now. It's going to be our basic uh, garrison units. So we're going to train a bunch of these. You can also always make sure to train uh, our Alpine divisions when we can. We'll, our capacity is going to be increasing over time. So we want to make sure to always churn out Rangers when we have the opportunity. Alpine Rangers. Let's see, we have our first perk of anti-partisan. Let's go with some, out, uh, some more so we could root out resistance even better. U.S. Congress passes Neutrality Act. So this is a historically friendly in which uh, the U.S. will decide to do nothing. The giant sleeps. That's better for us. Let's do some anti-communist raids, you know, all good fun. Hmm, logistics wizard. That's a very good perk to have on a field marshal. 15% supply consumption reduction is nothing to scoff at. We're going to need synthetic oil experiments as Italy since we have very little oil, as I said before, and we want to stay on top of that with synthetic refineries. It also gives us access to much needed rubber, good for planes and uh, motorized. <laughs> All right, we have our first Ethiopian division popping out here. Let's make sure to put them in their own army. Let's give them to... Who shall take care of them? Flexible strategist. Decided planner. Not that great. And let's go with this guy. So, I'm going to call these guys the Axumite levies. And all the levies we get from Ethiopia, we're going to be assigning to this army. And let's make sure to bring them into, let's say, Sicily right now, so we could rapidly deploy them wherever we need. Now, I would like to get a brilliant strategist in our army. I do not believe we have one. That's unfortunate, since we cannot make a top-notch um, offensive field marshal. That's problematic. 
Maybe we'll stay with Rodolfo Graziani, because I usually like separating my army into two major groups. Formazione. Defensive command and offensive command. Formazione. All right, so we're done adapting the Great War tactics. Our next perks are quite good, but I don't think I want these right now. What we're going to be doing is going over to the industrial side of our focus tree. Usually you want to sit, you want to hit up the industrial part of your focus tree very early because uh, industrial improvements snowball. The earlier you get to them, the more you benefit in the long run. Chinese Soviet Republic declared one Maklit. All right. It's still headed by Mao Zedong. Just check. Alright, we're done with our basic superior firepower. Let's go with a full research on the um, second part here. It's going to take over a year to do so, but that's alright. Alright, with 150 political power, let's go into uh, improving our government here. And let's get an industrial concern. And I like the Bombrini Paro di Delfino, which gives us a boost to industrial research speed, but the good part of it is a increase in military and civilian factory construction speed. This is very good and worth the money. So that's the kind of thing you want to get as early as possible, as uh, construction factories is kind of something you do during the whole game, especially at the start, and uh, we definitely want that. We'll be getting a captain of industry afterwards. All right. Let's go to expand hydroelectricity production. To solve our electricity problems, particularly because of our lack of coal, we have had dam construction programs in place for several years to build dams used for hydroelectric power generation. Oh, yeah, time to join the 20th century. All right, got some alpine divisions coming up. This first industry is done. Let's go for the second one right away since we have a uh, industrial bonus. Let's get the radio for an extra reinforce rate. Attento. I wish there was a way to set where uh, the levies automatically go. Any unit we get from a country, it'd be cool if I could put them all hey, into the same uh, army. It would save us the trouble. Now, one thing that kind of irks me in the Road to 57 mod is this right here, the law enforcement idea. Because you have the balanced approach, which is uh, only 50 political power and cost, but it makes that you get a notification all the time to modify your government. And you could over, and if you ignore it, well, you'll ignore the other notifications as well. So usually I grab the order above all, especially as Italy, as soon as possible so that I can not get this notification anymore. Hmm. So Great Britain is considering Scandinavian intervention, which will give them potential uh, war goals in Scandinavia, i.e. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. This is uh, interesting and not your typical uh, route you would see the British take. Pronto, signore. Invading other nations potentially to save them. All right, we have another 150 political power. I'm going to be putting into a captain of industry if I have one. Yep, right there. Enrico, my boy. So a boost to infrastructure, construction speed, civilian factory construction speed, and refinery construction speed. Very good. These two, very important to get in the beginning. All right, started our hydroelectricity program. Let's go with increase our marble exportations. Between La Spezia and Livorno stand the Apuan Alps, containing very large quantities of marble, where it is Carrara or Seraveza marble, veined with blue or black, marble remains one of our main export. We got top-notch rocks. We seem to be making good progress on our construction queue here, and we're churning out more and more factories. We want to make sure to have a good basis of civilian factories before we start making more military ones. Let's keep uh, improving our intelligence agency. The reason being we want to get uh, we want to get enough upgrades to get a second agent and thus uh, reduce 
resistance in various other countries. All right, we got our synthetic oil experiments done. Let's uh, get excavation one here so that we could drill for oil in Campania. Construction two for more construction speed. All right, let's get some happy pills for our agents in case they get caught. France and Britain an uh, announcing an alliance. Calling upon the bonds forged during the Great War, France has requested a formal alliance with Britain, citing unspecified threats against the stability of Europe. Uh -huh. Today their request was approved by the British Parliament, and France has joined the Allies. Well, they're buddying up. It's not all that good for us, but not the worst either. Alright, we've got our marble exportations going. Let's see here. Sicily, Campania, and Calabria, we could get plus three civilian factories, that's pretty darn good. And we could get also two military factories, as well as access to a war industrialist. Uh, let's start with the civilian factories, and then we'll go on to the military ones. Alright, that being done, let's get the radio detection, so we could start making radar stations. I love using radar stations in this game. Um, next thing is, I do believe we are done exercising our Air Force. Yes, we are. So let's start organizing our Navy here. Now we just got a death stack here that would not be very good at anything. So let's see right here. Our main fleet shall be called the Regia Marina. And one thing I like to do is simply grab all the submarines and put them in their separate army or Navy, you should say. Fleet. I'm gonna call these boys the Asia Marina. <clears throat> and we're gonna call these boys the Sea Wolves. Sea Wolves will be our submarine fleet. Let's give them a cute icon here. Let's look real quick who would make a decent admiral for these boys. Now, this boy right here, he's got the Sea Wolf trait, which is really good. However, he is also an old guard, which really reduces his experience income. That's something I don't like. One guy who's one level below has some very good traits down here. He's got Bold, which is awesome. Career Officer, which increases his uh, XP gain. And he's got Positioning, plus 25, and a good Spotting uh, capacity. That's very good, especially for Hunter Killers, i.e. Submarines. So we're going to make uh, Angelo here the leader of our um, Submarine fleet. And eventually, he'll be able to pick up the Sea Wolf trait by using only Submarines for a while. All right, and he's already got superior tactician, so we could give him the concealment expert perk, which makes it much harder for people to see him. We could also give the smokescreen specialist, but I think we'll keep a free trade open for him for now. As our main fleet goes, I won't be going for Inigo Campioni. I think I'll go for Alberto de Zara. The reason why is that he has the uh, a high navy organization and he his enemies retreat more, which is good for us in limiting damage to our... Navy, in my opinion, and he's got superior tactician positioning. It's very important for large fleets. So let's go with this boy right here. And then what we'll do is that we'll separate this into, let's say, four task forces here. And this is a fairly well-balanced series of task forces, in my opinion. As for the subs, let's break them into eight. That'll be good enough. So let's start with uh, exercising our submarines a little bit. Actually, let's put it on low. Let's make him exercise. With that, our fuel is slowly going down. That's fine. We want to use it while we're not at war to exercise our Navy and Air Force. Happy pills are done. Let's go with commando training. Give good perks to uh, whoever we recruit from now on. Now, as Italy, sadly, we do not have a basic um, <clears throat> military doctrine specialists in terms of uh, land doctrines. We only have mobile warfare and grand battle plan available to us, and these cost a lot of political power. So we're going to be going for a naval theorist or an air warfare theorist uh, instead, but not now. It's not going to be a huge priority for us. What we're probably going to do is uh, grab ourselves a material designer. Now, since we're going down the path of superior firepower, I think a plus 15% research speed on artillery is a no-brainer. 
And starting now, we're going to be improving our artillery quite a lot. All right, let's see who we have here. Sicilian nationality. Interesting. I didn't even know you could get that. So uh, let's go with the escape artist because uh, our agents have a bad tendency of getting caught. Now, look at that. We reduce uh, resistance to zero in this area. So let's make sure it stays that way. That being said, since resistance is now at zero, maybe we could uh, start spying on some people. But who? Maybe we should keep an eye on France. Let's start making a network here in France. All right, we're done with excavation one. Let's go for improved machine tools to get more production efficiency cap. And that means we can now drill for oil in Campania for seven PP only and two civilian factory uses for 70 days. Not bad at all. Alrighty then, with all that said and done, I think this is a good place to leave this episode. It was a pretty hefty one in which I had to uh, go through the basics of how we organize our army, navy, air force, and uh, start running down the industrial concerns of our nation. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, this is my first episode in my first series for Hearts of Iron 4 on any YouTube channel, so I'll still be uh, working out the kinks for a while. So let me know uh, what you thought about it. I'd like if the videos can be accessible to anybody that is a newcomer to Hearts of Iron 4, but also veterans that well as well. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like that video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can catch us in the next ones. Until then, have a great one, everybody. Take care of yourselves, wash your hands, and I'll see you around. Bye now.